In this video, I'm going to walk through a PBIX installer program that you can download from github.com, Critical Path Training, PBIX installer for Power BI. If you navigate to this URL in the browser, you can see the C Sharp program file that contains the code for this program. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a URL to the clipboard that will allow me to use the git utility and the clone command to download a local copy of this project. Once I've downloaded a local copy of this project, I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Windows Explorer. And I'll do that by moving to the directory and calling explorer space dot. And once I do that, I see it has an SLN file. So I can open this project up in Visual Studio 2017. Now, I'll note that this project is bare bones with respect to NuGet packages. If you look at the two different NuGet packages that I had to add to this project, it was one for the Active Directory Authentication Library, Adel for .NET, and a second one, the Newton JSON Converter, to convert back and forth. Between my C Sharp objects and the JSON, I'm basically passing and receiving from the Power BI REST API. In the model folder, there is a C Sharp source file with a whole set of classes, and these classes, their sole purpose is to convert data between JSON, payloads, and C Sharp strongly typed objects. Next, I'm going to open the program.cs file and look at the program constants class. Now, I have to get a client ID. And the way to get a client ID is by registering the app with Azure Active Directory. A quick and easy way to register your app is to go to app.powerbi.com slash apps. There is a page that allows you to register the app so you don't need an Azure subscription. So here, I'm going to put in my server. I'm going to specify the application type is a native app, not a server-side app. And I'm going to put in a reply URL. Now, I also have to set permissions. I'm just going to ask for all the permissions, and I'm going to click register the app. When you click register the app, it creates the app, and it creates the GUID. You take the GUID, and you put it in your code. Once we have the client ID and a redirect URL, or aka reply URL, we can interact with Azure Active Directory. OK, so let's go ahead and start by looking at this method, acquire access token. So the way this is going to work is we're going to use the Active Directory authentication library. We're going to create an authentication context. And we're able to authenticate. And because we're a desktop application, we can put in a parameter so it interacts with the user as the user runs the application. Now, let's go ahead and comment out a couple things. And I just want to run a simple display workspace contents. But the idea is when this program runs for the first time and it asks the user to authenticate. Well, I'll go ahead and authenticate here. And what you're going to see is a screen comes up. So the current user has to accept the permissions that the app is requesting. And the idea is that once you've done that the first time, you no longer have to do the interactive authentication afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've run that the first time and I've gotten through that interaction required, and I'm going to be basically running this program all day. The last thing I want to do is keep typing in username and password. So now I can switch over to using a user password credential in the Active Directory Authentication Library. OK, now don't tell anyone my password. But we're going to go ahead and hard code this information inside there. And now I can run the program, and it automatically authenticates. Now let's look at the execute get request. I create an HTTP client. I set up the headers for the access token. I go ahead and make the call. And it just basically takes in the URL and returns back a string. And that string is the JSON. And notice that then in display workspace contents, we're just calling out to this utility method. Now, let's go ahead and look behind the scenes at what's actually happening. So I'm going to bring up Fiddler. We'll go ahead and run this. And what we can see is that my program, first of all, which is across the network to get an access token. And you can see what comes back is there's an access token, there's a refresh token. And then note that I want to get the groups. I want to get the data sets, the reports. And you can see that we basically just have JSON moving back and forth. And my C-sharp classes are making it very easy to convert that into strongly typed objects inside. Now it's time to dig into the import PBIX method, which actually does the work of uploading and publishing the PBIX file. We call delete import to delete any other import of the same name. Next, we create a URL for the upload. And notice that we have a data set display name query string parameter. We'll actually pass the name that we want to use to create the import. Now, we create a stream content to actually put the bits in. And note that when we upload this, we have to use a content disposition with form data inside there and a multi-part form data content. So luckily, there are classes in .NET to deal with those. I have an HTTP client. And we're going to go ahead and do a post async. And basically, that is what's required 
to take the PBIX file and push it up into the Power BI service at PowerBI.com. Now that you've seen the implementation of the import PBX method, let's put it to use. I'm going to go grab a local file name, so I have a local file path. Next, I come up with a name I'm going to use when I create the import. You have to just give it a text string name. And let's go to Fiddler. Let's go ahead and get rid of everything there. Let's go ahead and make the call. And now let's go back and observe in Fiddler what actually happened. So as I look back in Fiddler, I see that there is the import and you can see the query string parameter where I gave it the name of the import. Now, once we've done that, let's go test out what we've done by going back into my personal workspace where I uploaded it. And Bob's your uncle. You can use the report right away because it has an imported mode data set. Okay, but our work's not done. We have one more PBX file that we need to upload, but this one uses direct query mode, which means we have to set the security credentials for it to work. Let's now walk through one more method named patch data source credentials. The idea is that after you've uploaded the PBX file, this then has to go through all the data sets and find the data set with the same name as the import. You take the GUID ID of the data set, create another URL to get something which is the gateway ID, even when there's no physical gateway involved. We have to also create the payload of the body, which is a data source credentials object. Once we take that body, we serialize it, and we're able to send it off with a patch request. Man, you haven't had this much fun since your last visit to the dentist. Okay, we're going to run the program once more. Let's clear out Fiddler. Let's go ahead and run the program. And so what we can see, if we look in Fiddler, is that as it runs, the first thing we do is we do the post to upload the PBX file. Then we go look at the data sets. We find the data set. We take the GUID ID of that data set, create a URL to get the gateway data sources. Once I get the gateway data sources, I get the gateway ID. You create your URL for the patch operation, which is gateway slash gateway ID, data sources slash data source ID. And then you make your patch request. Let's go ahead and move over. If I can figure out how to look at the body of this request, you could basically see I've sent in the basic credentials object. And it's that patch operation that sets your data source credentials, which is key when you're working with a direct query mode project because nothing's going to work until the data source has its security credentials. Now you know how to automate the process of uploading a PBX file to PowerBI.com and setting the credentials.